Good evening. Goodbye Forever, Volume 2, Chapter 21, Part 2. Are you a teacher? asked Geraint. No, that was the simplest answer to give. The fact that I was to be a llama in the future was a needless complication and would create a situation I would not want. Then how did you get to know all this? You seem to know a lot. Well, I've been studying Buddhism for quite a long time. I could say since I was eight years old, but that would give a false impression. I first came across books on Tibetan art at that age, and then, of course, it took me a fair few years before I could actually read anything seriously. Then it took longer before I began to sit, but I've been silent sitting since I was 14. That's young to start. I suppose so, but I used to sit before I sat, as it were. I used to sit and look at colours when I was young, especially in an old yew tree in the woods, and so I suppose it came almost naturally to me. So, you don't teach anywhere? No, what would I teach? The meaning of spiritual materialism? I just did, but only because someone used the term incorrectly and lambasted you with it. I wouldn't have mentioned it otherwise. You did ask me what I thought, so I told you, but that's not teaching, that's just having a conversation. Can I ask you some more questions? Yes, but not if you're going to start looking at me as if I'm a teacher, I smiled. I can't pretend to answer anything authoritatively anyway. I can only comment on what I know, or rather, I'll only tell you what makes sense to me in terms of my experience. That was really interesting what you said about spiritual materialism. I couldn't help overhearing your conversation with Garent. Sorry to eavesdrop, remarked a lady who introduced herself as Lydia Evesham. No apology necessary. I'm happy to be able to say anything useful to anyone and I like to meet people. I'm new here so it's good to find anyone friendly. I say I'm new here. I have been to Sammy Ling twice before but I can't see anyone here I ever saw before. Right, a, a lot of people have come because Galwa Karmapa is here. That's why I'm here. Akong Rinpoche suggested when I was here last that I should see Galwa Karmapa and attend the Vajra Crown Ceremony. So I went to attend that in London and that's when I found out he would be here. He'll be giving the Vajra Crown Ceremony here too, said Geraint. That'll be the first thing that happens, said Linda, Lydia, over a series of evenings. The next evening he'll give the initiations of Amitabha, Avalokiteshvara and Padmasambhava. Then there'll be Pakshi Trullo. Pakshi Trullo, I asked. The wrathful manifestation of Guru Rinpoche, Dorje Trullo manifesting as the second Karmapa, Karma Pakshi, Lydia explained. Now that is extremely interesting, I exclaimed. I would like to know more about that. It's restricted though, Geraint observed, like the Dorje Benakchen initiation on the following night, so neither Lydia or I will be attending those. What's the restriction, I inquired. Oh, Lydia observed, that you have to have completed Nundro. Ah, right, that would follow, I replied. What about you? Geraint asked. Me? Well, I have completed Nundro, but there may well be other considerations. I think I will have to inquire what's appropriate in my case. So, what can you tell me about Pakshi Trullo? Well, Lydia commenced, we've had some teachings on this recently and so I can tell you a little. 
It's a practice that was revealed by Min Jo Doje. Teton Yongle Mingyo Doje, I inquired. Yes, Mingyo Doje. I'd forgotten the full name and my pronunciation is terrible. No, it can be pronounced like that too. I have an Eastern Tibetan dialect from my lamas and they pronounce Tibetan closer to the written form. Anyhow, please tell me what you know. He was a Nyingma Teton, you see, but although it's a Nyingma Telma, Pakshi Trullo is only practised by the Karma Kagyu. How did that happen? That's the interesting thing, Lydia replied. Mingyur Dorje offered it to the 10th Karmapa and then the 10th Karmapa became the lineage holder. I like that. It shows how the lineages are wide open in terms of the authentic masters and how they relate to each other across the boundaries of schools. Mingyur Dorje also discovered the Kagyu Mahakala Dorje Bernak Chen, and gave that to the 10th Karmapa as well. So that's probably why Gyalwa Karmapa is giving these two initiations. The collection revealed by Mingyu Dorje also contains a cycle of teachings and practices of Dorje Trullo, the wrathful manifestation, one of the eight manifestations of Guru Rinpoche. I hope there will be some teachings on this during the week. I've really missed being able to hear teachings since I've been back in Britain. Do you happen to know anything else? Geraint shook his head, but Lydia knew a few more facts. Well, Mingyur Dorje lived during the times of the 10th and 11th Karmapas and contributed a lot to the Karma Kagyu school. The termas of Mingyu Dorje are very important because they strengthened the Karma Kagyu school in Kham. Through these practices, practitioners in Kham were able to turn back enemies and bring about peace. That's why the practice didn't become lost. The nun loomed up suddenly and said, These teachings weren't given so that people could chat about them over dinner, she snapped. Probably not, I replied, but neither do I imagine they were given to encourage harsh speech. The nun stared at me in disbelief for a moment, turned on her heels and walked away. Oh dear, Lydia whispered, I'm afraid you've made an enemy there. Yes, I sighed, I think you might be right, but she can't kill me and she might get over it. I suppose I could have said something different, but I thought she was fairly unpleasant to you and there was really no need for that. She can't wander about being nasty to people just because she's wearing nun's robes. Exactly, said Geraint. I sometimes wish I could think of the right things to say quickly enough, but I get tongue-tied when people say things like that and I tend to feel I'm probably in the wrong. Well, yes, you may be in the wrong, but right or wrong gives a person no excuse to be rude or aggressive. Was any statement made about not talking about this material? No, they both replied together. Then if it's not restricted and you were both free to tell me whatever you told me. How come... Geraint laughed. You always make the answer sound so easy. I mean, it seems as if I should have been able to have worked that out for myself. Well, you probably could have done if you'd thought about it. It's always hard to think on your feet and reply immediately to assaults like that. I've had a good teacher, you see. Who gave you a teaching like that? asked Lydia with a smile. That seems an amazing kind of teaching. A great teacher. His name's Todd Welcome and he's on my year at Bristol Art School. You're joking, Lydia laughed. Partially, I grinned. 
He's not a teacher, but he's certainly taught me how to respond to aggression without becoming aggressive. He's given me daily lessons. I'm afraid they've not always been delightful, but I realise that I owe him a great deal. He doesn't know he's given me these lessons, of course. It's just been my choice to see them that way. Another nun appeared at this point. I heard some of that, she said with a concerned voice at which I inwardly groaned. And I just want to tell you that we're not all like that. Some of us are concerned with having a good atmosphere. Thank you, I smiled. I'm Churgyam, Nakpa Churgyam. I'm Annie Churying. What a splendid coincidence. Chu Ying is actually my first name, but it's contracted and joined with the Gyam from Gyamtso. Like Chu Gyam Trumpa Rinpoche's name. Almost, his is Chu Ki Gyamtso. But when you contract both names, they both turn into Chu Gyam. And thank you again for coming over and being friendly. It was really kind of you. Well, we're supposed to try to be kind, aren't we? Yes, we are, I grinned, but thank you all the same. Maybe we can find time to talk whilst I'm here. That would be nice because I'd like to ask you about your robes and your hair. I had an audience with a group of other monks and nuns with Dilgo Kiense Rumshe, and he had a white skirt and long hair, so I'm wondering if you're connected with him. I have met Kyabje Dilgo Kyantse Rinpoche, yes, and received some advice from him on practice, but Kyabje Dujim Rinpoche is my main teacher. He's also a Nakpa. I'll ask you about that when we get the chance to speak. It's almost time to go to the Wang now, so I will look out for you tomorrow. Annie Churying left the dining hall, and Lydia Garent and I talked for a short time about how good it was to find a friendly ordainee who was not sanctimonious or pietistic. We entered the shrine room, made our prostrations, and I took my seat as requested amongst the ordained. Gyalwa Karmapa was, as always, not quite conceivable. Nothing happened at first, we simply sat and waited. The hostile nun glowered at me, but I decided to let her slip into peripheral vision. I wished her happiness in my mind and gazed at the coloured stripes on the wall. The colours were always radiant and soon my attention was lost in them. Settling into a thought-free state was easier than it had been years ago and it didn't take long to find the first flickering of absence of thought with presence of awareness. It was even quicker in that shrine room with Gyalwa Karmapa than it otherwise was. He was somehow slightly outside the normal three dimensions to which I was accustomed, and I found that it was not possible to be aware of him and of myself at the same time. If my attention was absorbed in him, my sense of myself simply vanished and I became some kind of merely looking without any sense of what was looking. Then the Vajrayana Orchestra commenced and the stages of the Wang followed each other. Then, seemingly seconds after it had commenced, it was over and I was on my way to bed. I was aware somehow that something highly unusual had occurred, but it was impossible to say what it was. It had been powerful and vivid, mainly an experience of sound and colour and of something being conjured. I could describe every aspect of the Wang and no one would be any the wiser by the end of the detailed description. I thus give no detailed description here. Such description can, in any case, be obtained elsewhere. 
I could give a physiological description of what it's like to fall in love, but it would bear no relation to the actual experience. That's why people write poetry. But here, even poetry would not suffice to describe any of the wangs or ceremonies given by the 16th Galois Karmapa. <laughs>